Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to John Good and one of the voices of mixed martial arts around the world. How are you, John? Good to see you. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on. I think you've got one of the coolest jobs in the world. Calling fights at the very <laughs> highest level must be an absolute buzz. In your opinion, who's the greatest combat sports commentator of all time? Well, I really don't know. I've never really thought about it like that. Um, do I? Can I say John Anik? Absolutely. Uh, I think he's... The, I think he's certainly up there. I think he's up there. It's, yeah, I, I I don't have a great memory of the individuals when I used to listen to boxing uh, way back when, but I do remember being quite envious of that relationship between Harry and Frank Bruno. And that's kind of stuck with me, uh, Harry Carpenter. So that stuck with me with my work with guys in the European region, if you like. I would always love to be in a position where I'm welcomed warmly into the gym. If an athlete sees me, they're they're willing to engage. They're open up. They'll perhaps share with me something that they wouldn't necessarily necessarily share with everyone else. So trust me. And I, and I think that that relationship that Harry and Frank Bruno had was was absolutely epic. But I I really think that uh, John Anik does a, a brilliant job in mixed martial arts, which is a very different way of commentary, I believe, from from boxing. Can I ask you a little bit about your process? Because I've been at uh, media days and you see Dominic Cruz, you know, mixing with all the journalists and getting his questions in with the fighters. And it struck me how diligent he is. For you, do you do you like to try and chat to the fighters during fight week or, or do you know them all so well now? Or how does it work for you? Oh, no, 100%, 100%. So uh, what a lot of people don't realise about me is that I actually do a lot of producing work for the UFC. So I go into the camps, uh, the the fight promo stuff that you often see. If it's in Europe, it's likely that I would have produced that feature. So I get to visit guys in their gyms, in their homes. I mix with sometimes their families, obviously their coaches. So I get a really intimate look at what it what it all is constructed like. And when I first got to the UFC, I actually asked for the PR team to schedule time for me to sit down with as many fighters as I could and grab like 15, 20 minutes so that I could get the story directly from the athlete rather than just going out there and trying to mine for what whatever the storyline might be. And I think that comes from my background of doing this at the grassroots level. Like I wasn't a guy that came through broadcasting and was working with the BBC Sky Sports, etc. Like I was part of a fight team. The KO show was where I made my debut, which is my coach's own show here in Watford. I'd be running around the dressing rooms as guys are getting their hands wrapped for their very first amateur fights, trying to find out who this individual is because Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, just wasn't around at the level that it is now back then in 2009. So I've really had to learn how to do this the hard way. And I take all of that through to what I'm doing now. And, and I like to find, I like to find the information that, respectfully guys like yourself wouldn't necessarily know so when it comes to the broadcast everyone hears something a little bit fresh and new fantastic it shines through what was your highlight of 2022 then there were many but if you had to pick out one what was the craziest thing you uh, saw i think probably that the top one for me has got to be that march card in london it was three years in the making. It's obviously very dear to my heart for the UFC to come to London. I live, you know, 45 minutes from this, from that venue. And the way that the night just transpired, the performances, the crowd engagement, which was just mind-blowing. Yeah, individual performances and real breakout moments for guys like Arnold Allen, uh, Molly McCann, Tom Aspinall. It, it was... At, uh, Mohamed Mokayev, just spectacular. And it opened up, which was unprecedented, a second show in, in London, which is great for me again. Uh, and obviously the you know UK MMA. And it was it really was a, a big moment for me. Closely followed up, I have to say, by UFC Paris. That again was an unbelievable occasion, crowd participation off the scale, and we made history over there. So it was a really big year for European MMA. As a guy who's been well involved in the scene, how intrigued are you by Paddy Pimblett? How much of an X factor has he got? Of course, lots of debate over his last fight and the result. That's the nature of the sport, isn't it? But is he this generation's kind of big star and how important is he for the scene in the UK? 
Yeah, of course he is. I think just the the numbers already, and we know we live in a, a very there's the newspapers turn over things very very quickly nowadays. So if you keep that in mind, then Paddy's already a big star. Doesn't kind of matter what happens from here. He's made a huge impact. When I go to the barbers, they're talking about Paddy Pimblett. When I go to a barbecue or hanging out with the guys, my friends who are big football fans, they want to know about Paddy Pimblett. And then they'll they'll follow up with some other fighters as well, like Leon Edwards or, you know, who's this Alexander Volkanovsky guy? So, but Paddy Pimblett leads the conversation right now. Um, Paddy's who you see on social media, that is how he is when he's in the gym. When he's you know down tools from his training, he's very authentic. Love him or hate him, you're going to watch him. Um, I've known about Paddy for a very long time. I I, I commentated on uh, his fights way back in Cage Warriors, or one of them at least, when he was just a a wide eyed teenager, but still had very similar characteristics. He does bring a few different X factors actually with his grappling style, his explosive nature, uh, the risk taking. Doesn't always pay off, but that's what makes him exciting. But it's his ability to show up when the lights are bright. He's got so many eyeballs, but it doesn't seem to affect the way that he performs. And that in itself is a skill. Connor had it. Now we see that Paddy has it. Does it necessarily mean he's going to be a world champion? No. Um, he's obviously got improvements to make. We've, you know, we saw with Jared Gordon, who's a very like rugged fighter. That, uh, that there's some improvements can, that can be made. This is mixed martial arts. We expect that of all the athletes, but I'm excited to see what he can turn out in 2023. What's the perfect next fight for him, do you think? One or two names that you would like to see? I really don't. I'm terrible at that question, honestly, just because the, the that particular division is so very deep. Um, but I don't think that he needs to be thrown to a, a top 10 uh, athlete right now. I think that the last fight showed that there's there's still work to be done and there's a, a slower climb might benefit his overall career trajectory. So let's see him with someone who's on that that top 15, you know, top 20 cast. And those guys, by the way, on any given night can challenge the top five as well because that is such a deep division. And these guys are just so, so good in the UFC now at, at the very top level. You mentioned Connor there because I think in terms of draws, it's, it's a different generation, isn't it? Connor is of a different generation now. But uh, I spoke to Din Thomas recently, who said he'd love Masvidal McGregor. That's just a, I agree, have to agree. Is that the perfect fight for McGregor next, or do you have something else in mind that would would be better? No, that's a good one. That is a good one actually, because they are, you know, they're both they're both big characters, right? They've they've made a, an indelible mark on the sport. They've had their moments. They're veterans, if you like. Um, yeah, I could see that one. I could see that one working. You're obviously going to have guys like Michael Chandler that will be angling for a, a fight against someone like Conor McGregor. But um, yeah, I, I think when you look at recency, then probably, yeah, I like what Dean Thomas has suggested there. I'll certainly tune in. We've got uh, Sandhagen and, and Marlon Vera to look forward to. That could be an absolute banger. In the UFC apex, which some people aren't happy about, what do you make of that one? Um, I mean, I, I love both of those guys. Uh, I particularly like the way Corey Sandhagen... See, I, like the, I do like the quiet guys who fight with such freedom and they're so very dynamic. He's a guy that coaches the kids, you know, he's um, he's someone that you would definitely roll out to someone who doesn't necessarily love mixed martial arts and just have a look at this guy, his resume, the way he carries himself. And, and you know, he's a real, he's got those championship qualities that we saw out of someone like Georges Saint-Pierre, but his fights are just glorious. They're close when he doesn't get the win. Um, obviously, you know, the Sterling fight is the exception there. But then you've got Marlon Vera, who's a very bellicose character. Uh, I love the fact of where he's come from, a very small market, if you like, but obviously taking his training over stateside. And the kid's tough, talented as hell, seriously tough. And that's going to be a, a, a dogged fight. And we're going to see some... Really nice mixed martial arts. I love I love that kind of weight category for showing us 
some lovely blended mixed martial arts, but they also do have the ferocity at times to create these standout moments as well. The apex is going to mean, I don't know if it's going to make a great deal of difference, the size of the octagon for those two and their styles. We might see a little bit more engagement. It's not like heavyweights um, in terms of the difference that the size of the octagon makes, but you know, fight of the night doesn't matter who else is on the card. It's it's that's what it looks like to me already. Three years ago, I would have been embarrassed to ask this question, uh, but things have changed rapidly. Jake Paul, the prospect of him ever fighting in the UFC, were you surprised to see his announced with the PFL? I was surprised. Then, uh, uh, weirdly, I, I commented on the MMA Junkie um, post there, and like the reaction has been unbelievable. I didn't expect to have so many people engage with me about it. I haven't really paid too much attention to the kind of YouTube boxing thing. I'm very much an MMA purist and our legends of the sport, I I like to protect them. You know, they've done such great work to help elevate the sport to where it is today that I don't like to see their, their legacy tarnished so much. So, there's obviously, but I've obviously had an eye on the rise of Jake Paul, and I do appreciate good marketing and people that can promote themselves. As someone who's obviously on on this side of the microphone, I, uh, I'm interested to see how it works for athletes and who's doing what, why, why it works, why it doesn't work. So now he's looking at coming over to MMA. I, I give him my respects because anyone that makes that walk, listen, anyone that makes the walk to the ring to the cage octagon i've done it myself even onto the tatami for grappling comps you know it, it gets it gets the juices going and when you've got a lot of eyeballs like i mentioned about paddy and connor there's an awful lot of pressure to try and be your authentic self to try and get out what you can put in in training when you've got that amount of pressure is so very difficult and reserved for the few and he's not someone that's steeped in um experience in combat sports as well so i have to give him my dues but Listen, he hasn't he hasn't fought MMA yet. Let's see how he does. Um, I, do I think that he'll get to the UFC? No, uh, but uh, good luck in his pursuits with the PFL. And he was never going to do it on, you know, uh, up and down MMA around some kind of state in the US. It has to be of a certain level because he brings so much attention. So I I probably will watch that one. Stranger things have happened. Uh, brilliant. John, to finish yeah. off, if you'll indulge me in my uh, quick fire, uh, which I've done with many, many fighters and, and one or two commentators. So who is the hardest hitter in the UFC? Well, it, it looks like it's Francis Ngannou, doesn't it? I mean, it's hard to argue with Francis. Best wrestler? Ooh, best wrestler. Interesting one. Islam Makhachev, I think. Who would you most like to have dinner with? Um, hmm. Who would I like to have dinner with? Someone that's not going to steal the food off of my plate, I guess. Uh, who would I like to have dinner with? It'd probably be one of the it probably be one of the champions I would imagine. Um, I'd, I'd say Israel Adesanya. I have to say I've come across him a couple of times. We have had some conversations. He's a he's a fascinating individual. Um, I know that uh, I know that he doesn't currently hold the, the the strap right now, but I mean you know he's broken down so many walls. Yeah, I, I, but super interesting guy. I think I'd like to I'd, I'd like to I'd like to have dinner with Israel Adesanya. Who's the funniest? Um, oh. Who is the funniest? We've got some real characters. We really do. Um, I mean, I can only say, I mean, it's just a bit obvious right now, but Darren Till always makes me laugh. I have a little bit of an affection for Darren, and because we're both Brits, we probably you know, get one another's sense of humour. So he, he he does make me laugh and, and he's he's actually a friend. So, yeah, he, he tickles me every now and then, does Till. Who's the most annoying? Oh, the, oh I couldn't possibly <laughs> answer that. Uh, they, they're all, uh, 
annoying and can be a a good thing sometimes because they it, it might be that uh you're not pulling for someone necessarily for what they might have said or done but then all of a sudden they post an incredible performance so yeah i'm going to i'm going to firmly sit on the fence for that one i no, just well can't played. think of anyone particularly annoying either well played who's got the coolest tattoos You know, I really liked TJ Dillashaw's. Uh, he's got some really lovely fine line uh, artwork. I'm not someone, I'm not a painted man myself, but there's a, I think it's Bang Bang Tattoos in New York where he went and it was a place that I'd earmarked. One of those things that we get when we hit the midlife, oh, I must get a tattoo and, and that's the place. So he's got some, some really lovely uh, artwork. Brilliant. Uh, who would you most like by your side in a street fight? Um, Dustin Poirier. Interesting. Yeah, that guy's not going. That guy's not going anywhere. I, I, I think his moral compass is very good. Uh, he's tough, and uh, yeah, if anyone knows anything about fighting and they see Dustin stood by you, then they're going to think twice about it. Who's the most interesting female fighter right now? Manon Firo, I think, uh, for in terms of the work that she's doing, uh, it, I'm very interested to see how she'd fare against Shevchenko. But in terms of overall package, Valentina, you know, just from she is just an incredible martial artist. But all the other strings to her bow, the dancing, the shooting, culturally, she just seems like she's a very uh, worldly woman and with our acting pursuits as well super interesting person to follow and to look up to who's got the best hands the best hands you know i'm gonna it just comes to mind because i've seen some of his i was going back through the highlights of the year i, I think Ilya taporia i think his boxing is very very good for such a good grappler as well so uh, i really like Ilya taporia's hands Intriguing. And the last one, who would be your dream fight, past or present, any weight class or, or dream role, if you prefer? Any weight class, past or present. I think in the present, I, going back to Valentina, I'd like to see her rematch Amanda Nunes. It would have to be at the right kind of weight, weight division. Um uh otherwise who else would i like to see that we didn't get to see you know it's never going to happen but wouldn't you like to see islam makachev versus habib namagomedov like it's never gonna it, it's never gonna happen they're brothers but when you look at i think that islam makachev is going to be a problem for a long time and when you look at the legacy that habib left then if you were to try and see those two go together that's obviously happened in the training room a bunch I would pay to see that sparring footage, uh, but, th but that would be quite an interesting one. Caught, caught me out there a little bit. I needed to give that one more thought. So. That's why we call it a dream fight. Brilliant stuff, John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic shirt as well. Absolutely fantastic. Great to see it. Legend. Love it. All right, top man. Have a good one. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks ever so much. Cheers.